Good morning, everybody. It's time to get started on this old girl here. We're going to get her pulled off the trailer. I got this perfect little spot in my yard to hopefully perfect. And then we'll uh, get her off, get her over to the garage over there with Coda 1996 help. Oh. And we're going to try to uh, get her fired up today. Stay tuned. All right, here we go. We're towing her off with the old Silverado. It's a bit scary. <laughs> One armed. Talk about arm strong power steering. We got a blazer over there. <coughs> okay. There we go, guys. She's actually in the garage. Now I just gotta run to the store and get some uh, heater. I definitely think there's something major wrong in that wheel. It's clunking real bad. I think we might have a bad CV shaft. But uh, these are some heck of a good wheels because on the inside, when I had the wheel turned up there, you could see that the whole sidewall is massively blown out. And there's just a tiny little scratch in the paint where the guy hit the curb or whatever he did with it. Damn non-drivers. Sorry about the noise from the heater over there, but it's kind of cold up here. So first thing we got to do is find keys for the uh, uh, lugs because we got to get this off. But the inside of the tire, let's see if we can, if you can, it's bad. So we're going to start with that. Get the tire you want to see a flat tire? You want to see what, look at that. You know what that is? That's uh, a fix a flat, okay? You think it's gonna fix that? I think we have a failure to understand how the product works. I think, yeah, the, uh, I mean, and we only got a little chip right here, so it looks like they caught the curb. Hopefully the wheel's not bent. It doesn't look like it's gonna be, but I definitely gotta replace that tire. And I don't think my, CV shaft is bad. I think the clunking that I was hearing was that tire flopping around in there. So this is our issue right here. They said the tensioner failed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and take the motor mount up. We're going to jack the motor up, take this motor mount off, take all these belts off, take this plastic cover off, and then, um, you know, from down here, everything looks real good, kind of. Kind of. So then I got to figure out what kind of strut this is. See the nice red shiny? This side's not an adjustable strut. This side's factory. And this is what kind of stuff I have to uh, go through. I have to go over every nut and bolt in this car. Um, exhaust gasket missing. The gasket's out of there. So bolt missing. Yeah, um, we there's a lot of I don't know if this stuff's actually quality or just all eBay crap. I know that's like just advanced auto. I think this here um, we got a nice, nice big amp wire and it and it does go to the back for my subs. I'm gonna put that Alpine Ten in there. I got a nice Alpine Ten, but I did want to paint the car green. But, I just, I don't know, man. There's, there's so many of you have showed so many cool cars on the Eclipse group on, on Facebook that um, I just don't know that I'm going to go with green. I've seen some, I've, I've seen red. The red cleaned up really nice. But all the paint's bubbling. So I got to get all that. Look at that. You can push the bubble. See that? Fluid paint. Is that what we call that? Yeah. We call that... Water-based paint. We call that rust underneath there. Mm -hmm. So this paint's going to have to come off. I do like this car red. I was thinking about painting it the silver of my uh, um, Silverado that I painted. So we're just going to have to think about it and go from there. But I'll let you guys know what the next step is on doing this timing belt. All right, we went and pulled the valve cover off just to see if we could find a smoking gun anywhere. And I don't really see anything that bad other than that lifter, or rocker arm, rather. 
is uh, a smidge loose. Let's see. Let's see if I can catch how much that moves. See? So that's a little loose, but every other one is tight. And the cam lobe looks looks good. Let's see. Yeah, first initial inspection here. Look at that. They got little roller roller rockers on there. Yes. That's pretty fancy. But it looks like all the valves are still in it. So that that's a plus. Big plus. I guess uh, um, I'm working over here, getting this motor mount out. We got the belts off. We loosened um, this bolt uh, down here. And then we loosened uh, this bolt here and this bolt here. And that's what loosened this one. Holy cow, man, that sucker turns hard. Pump? Yeah, I don't know if that's supposed to turn that hard. Could be shot. Hey. Okay, it's. Oh wait a minute. Oh, let's see. This bolt is against it. Yeah. When you loosened? No, not one. I loosened. Right there. That bolt's rubbing on the pulley. Right there. Oh, wow. And I didn't loosen that bolt, so. Mm. Yeah, I gotta go through this car. Camera this for me, camera girl. Okay. We are, uh, we're done with this project for now. Where'd she go? Come on, right there. It ain't showing up. Try pulling back some. See that spot right there? That is the imprint of a valve. So, this piston looks the same. Whoops. Hang on. You're better at that, probably. I'm trying to be a helper. You got to spit on it. Get in it. Get in it. Oh. Oh, there we go. See that shiny spot right there? That shiny spot right there? Mm-hmm. That's where the valve hit the piston, and there's another one. So well, now what you can do. So that means the head's got to come off. And Oh, look at this one. Check this one out. That's dual cams. Yeah. Look at that. Nice and wet. All that uncombusted fuel, which goes with the fuel and the oil. Nope. Which goes with this spark plug here. Oh, geez. Which is nice and wet compared to its cousins, which are nice and dry. Prognosis. Okay, so when this belt slipped, whatever went on here, I'm, I don't know. The guy lied to me. I, it didn't slip at, at startup because there wouldn't have been that much damage. So we're going to end up pulling the head. The thing is, I don't want to make this, I mean, this is not going to be a million dollar project. I'm just going to pull the head and, um, and we're going to redo. I'm going to put a nice new timing belt on it, get it all set right. We're going to do what we can do. If the pistons are still good and not damaged that much, um, I'm going to just put it back together. With we could the, take them to a machine shop and have them resurface too. Not pistons. Once they're damaged, they're done. We could do forged pistons. Well, then that's coming in motor number two. Mm -hmm. So all I want to do is get this motor together and running. This, this is a mental thing right here. Mental thing, okay? Because... If this car sits too long, I won't want it anymore. So, what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to start actually unpulling the head. And I may um, have the head and valves replaced while I'm gone. Maybe when I come home in three weeks, we might be able to put her back together. So, that's it for now. We're done with this video. So... Tell me what you guys think. Leave a comment. Hit that like button. Please don't hit the... If you know what, if you need to, 
hit the dislike button if you need to. But I prefer you hit the like button. Leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think. Should I not even be messing with this motor at all and go ahead and build the four to 500 horsepower next motor? Or just put this one back together for now. So that's it. Do the right thing. Bye. Okay, we're not done, guys. I'm going to go ahead and film tearing this apart. What you do is you start from the middle, either one of these two, and I'm going to turn these a quarter turn. Actually, my helper's going to. Hi. Coda1996, that's his YouTube channel. K-O-D-A-1996. We're going to turn these each a quarter turn. This takes a lot of patience. But just think, if this side's bolted down and you loosen this up and this cam is pushed by the, the lobe, that better not be the lobe of that one. Well, I guess the lo you know what? I'm looking at these lobes versus the lobes on a small block Chevy. Yeah, so <laughs> these two are going to match, and these two are going to match. So, okay, so see that lobe right there, that much distance. This side is going to be pushing up that, you know, that much harder on this cam. So it could actually snap the cam. So we're going to start here, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter, you get it. Until they're finger loose, and then we pull them off. But for now, I'm going to take these cam bolts off. This is the first time I have actually seen the under the hood of one of these cars. So this tells a guy that as long as you know a few basic knowledge things, a guy could do anything he puts his mind to. So we're going to get started. All right, working on trying to get this done the best way I can and clean this way I can. So I got an old bucket here. These are the... The uh, rocker arms, I'm going to go ahead and pour some uh, oil in there. I kept all these in a straight line. I'm going to have to find a way, probably take an old Walmart bag and um, pour some uh, oil in because that cam cannot have any rust on it at all. Um, some more things I found going through here. I, I need to just tear this apart as far as I can to get restarted. This is the kind of stuff I'm dealing with. Look at that. I didn't even loosen that. Three washers. Oh. One, two. Yeah, three washers. Not even tight. So, I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and yank this motor and then um, go from there. I, I don't know yet. There's two bolts missing, one on this side, right down there. That one's missing, so we only got two in here. They're the wrong size, so I really want to get this done right. That's open. I, I'm sure that was a pyrometer gauge or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish taking this apart. I'm going to take it all apart. As abused as the motor is, I think it's really going to be a waste to put a nice, clean, brand new head on when I should at least go ahead and put a set of rings, rods, and mains in it. I'm going to get the block checked, I think, the head checked. It's not going to be now, though, so I'm going to get it tore apart. i got to figure out how this gets pulled out. I'm sure there's not enough room to uh, pull just the motor. I'm pretty sure it's got to be motor and transmission. My engine looks way out back, so and that's what I got all the other bolts in. So keep all everything in looking good. But you know, I don't see any major rust or anything in here. She, uh, you know, up here in New York, this she she would be pretty pretty beat. All this would be rusted underneath. These cars basically wouldn't exist up here, basically. So I'm gonna drain the coolant, take the exhaust manifold off. Get some room over here to be able to work and breathe. Then I'm going to see what it takes to take the intake off. And again, I know I have never worked on one of these before. I have never even checked the oil in one of these cars before. So if you guys see anything, you know, this, that, whatever, don't look right, let me know. I want to kind of put this together, you know, as, as, uh, Good as I can, I really want to make a, a decent car out of this. So, um, but I don't want to put a ton of money in it. As everything I do, it's budget build. So, um, I'm going to get tearing more apart and uh, keep you posted. We're back at it. Well, we've been at it, but um, I just need to tell myself this 
goes to the to the bottom side of the turbo right there so I'm sticking that right here this went to something over here or something like that we're just gonna remember that that's unplugged and then this little fella right here goes on the top of the uh, power steering pump there somewhere the little stud but I got these all pulled off this is not going back together either way no matter how I do it without a uh, decent set of hardware kit. I'll try for ARP studs or something like that. The, this is what I'm thinking as I'm tearing it apart. I'm trying to figure out what to bet. Now this transmission's junkyard transmission too. See all the yellow writing under there? Where'd it go? Anyway. Right down in there. Yep, there you go. Okay. Junkyard transmission. So, what I'm going to end up doing is, this looks so simple to pull out. So, I'm going to take the head off probably, just to see, you know, what it looks like. If it looks really good, which I doubt, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, just do the head. But I think instead of busting loose the lower ball joint there, I can take the uh, fork off for the... For the um, adjustable coil over which I got to figure out what brand that is because the I'm probably gonna buy two new ones for the front because the other one's not it's not there it's a factory one I think you could pop that knuckle right there take that bolt off push the uh, CV shaft through pull it back out then you got the same thing to the other side then the CV shafts are out so that's easy then um um, you know, just finishing unhooking everything else. We already got this motor mount. So then there's, let me see, a transmission mount there, that little red sucker down there. And then unhooking these uh, linkages and stuff here. Right there, that linkage, that linkage. The hydraulic clutch line, probably, I'm thinking that's what that is. And then any wiring, all this wiring will just pull off and come off to the side so I'm working on just trying to get the front side of the exhaust off I'm probably gonna go ahead and try to drain the coolant I don't even know if there's any coolant in here so I, I have a few options let me know what you guys think one just do the head that's a whole lot of wasted work if it just ends up smoking and running crappy Two, rebuild this motor the way I want to the right way New rings, rods, mains, polished crank, block work done, checked for cracks and all that. Um, you know, maybe some fancy rods, uh, good pistons, um, everything. Okay, go go through it. Or buy, you know, whatever I can get a used motor for, seven, eight hundred bucks, drop it in. Now, I'm leaning towards the seven or eight hundred dollar motor, drop it in. But the only problem with that is that's seven or eight hundred bucks I could put into just rebuilding this motor. But how long is that going to take? That's going to take over a year. If I buy the seven hundred dollar used motor, this can be back in this winter driving next summer. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to find a used motor. So anybody knows where these used motor? Let me know. And then let me know. I'm pretty sure I have to pull the whole thing out in one piece. I think, bad, but see the transmission's over there. So I don't know if I can pull the whole thing up and out. Okay, I'll go. I'm babbling. We got quite a bit done here. I just want to do this for personal reference. I had to cut the uh, fan motor wire. It's, it's a green one on this side. And um, red one over here. I just wanted to do that for personal reference. All this was too close to the uh, header, obviously. So now I'm going to keep, uh, I'm just taking stuff apart. I pulled the plumbing off. I pulled off the uh, intercooler. Um, just keep taking stuff off. Remembering where it goes. Going from there. I guess uh, motor might have to come out the bottom from what I'm understanding. And because um, there's no way enough for it to go this way. And actually it might. I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe we'll tilt the motor sideways because I have an engine left and um, that might be the best way to do it.
but we'll see. I'm just going to keep taking it apart in here, and then um, later on we'll end up pulling it. All right, I just took this little line off here. I'm going to take this ground off that goes to the head, and it goes on that bolt right there. And then I'm going to start unhooking some wiring. I got all this, uh, got a lot of this out. I think we're going to pull it from the top because we've got a smidge of room over there. And if this comes forward, we can clear that. So I like pulling motors from the top. Dodge pulls them. You know, a lot of Dodges come out the bottom and, and it's just, it's just such a pain. But this car, I'm not sure, you know, maybe I'll just pull the head off for now and see what we got. Go from there. But I had to take the uh, jack out underneath. So I, I put uh, around this bracket, around that right there, and ratcheted it up to that. So if I'm going to have to do anything else with that, I'm going to have to find another place to hook that. So this is what we got so far. She's coming apart. That's the easy part. All righty. We got a lot done here. I got all the injectors unplugged, all the wiring harness. This is all pulled. You want to just have that tucked off to the side. You just start at the farthest point and you just start unhooking things. Wiring harnesses are usually designed to come over to the side. Now I wanted to get this tucked back in. There we go. I saw it on the move the thing, but I didn't. So that goes there and over to there. And then this one I'm unhooking now, then that one. And um, we will just keep on going. All right, everybody, this is where we stop for the night. Should just be for the night, but tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Shift and linkage unhooked, fuel line unhooked. That top side wiring harness done. I think there's a bottom side wiring harness, a couple wires, and then a bunch of mounts. Hydraulic line right there. A um, couple of motor mounts in the uh, oil system over here. So what am I in the oil cooler right here? This is the plan. This is the final decision, guys. And if I say any different, um, yell at me. There's no sense in spending, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars, however much I can get a used motor for. Put all the gaskets in, put all new ARP studs on it and get everything done. Probably a new clutch, you know, whatever. All that, you know, spend 1500 bucks, whatever, putting a used motor in here just to rebuild that motor and take the used motor out in a year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck it up. I wanted to drive this car next summer. I'm not going to. I want to buy the right struts for it. I'm going to have all the new hardware for it. Everything under this hood is going to be good condition. I haven't decided on the color yet. It's supposed to be Fast and the Furious green, and that's probably what it's going to be. But um, I might wrap it uh, after that. So what I'm going to do is make sure all under the hood is painted. Um, I, I do kind of like this satin black. Okay, that's it. Motors, you know, about ready to pull. I can pull it about any time. Just finish unhooking a, a few things. About two hours should be out and on the ground. So that's it. Like, share, subscribe, comment, do the right thing.